Hello Coding Stars, welcome to the 3D Book Tutorial. In this video, we'll be using HTML, CSS and JavaScript to make something like this. This looks cool, isn't it? So after you finish watching this, you'll be able to customize the book however you like by just tweaking the codes a little bit. So this is what I did. So let's dive into it. So looking at our project directory, we have three different files. So the first one is called the index.html file. So this is the empty HTML template. And we also have the main.js file and the style.css file. First of all, let's start by changing our title to book. And then let's link our CSS file and also add the JavaScript file, just like this. And don't forget to add the differ attribute. So the differ attributes make sure that the HTML is loaded to the browser before the JavaScript runs. So this prevents errors such as the JavaScript file referencing the DOM elements before this DOM elements is loaded to the browser. Looking at the outcome, we can see that we have this button on the left and the actual book in the middle and another button on the right. So let's go back to the HTML and implement that. Oh, before we start, we will be using these arrow icons from the Font Awesome website. So this is the Font Awesome website. So we'll be just using this free version. So don't worry, it won't cost you anything. So if you don't know how to use this Font Awesome website, so please check out my previous video on how to use the Font Awesome website. So let's dive into the HTML. So let's start by adding the kit code from the Font Awesome website. Inside the body tag, we have three big chunks. So here we have the previous button, so which is on the left side of the website, and the book section, which is in the middle of the website, and the next button, which is on the right side. Let's have a look inside the book section. At the moment, we're going to start with a single piece of paper inside a book, but don't worry. We'll be adding some more later on after we get the basic styling done. Inside the paper, we divided the paper into the front page and the back page. So here we can see the front page of the paper. And when we flip over this paper, we can see the back page. Now let's dive into CSS to make this look like this. All right, so for every element, we want the margin to be zero and the padding to be zero and the box sizing to be the border box. And we want the body tag to fill the screen height and we want the contents inside the body tag to be centered. So display flex, justify content center, align item center and we want the font family to be the sans serif and the background color to be powder blue. Now let's start styling the book.
The reason why we use the absolute position for the paper is because when we add more papers to our book, we want the papers to overlap one in front of another. Here we also use the absolute position for the front and the back page because we want the front page to be on top of the back page. However, if you have a look at the website, it seems like the back page is in front of the front page. So we can fix this by changing the Z index for the front and the back page. Here we made the Z index of the front page higher than the back page, so that the front page is now on top of the back page. Now let's style the contents inside the front page and the back page. It seems like the buttons are too small. Let's give them a quick style. Now the buttons are looking good. It seems like the basic stylings are pretty much done. So let's get rid of the borders. It's looking good. So let's go back to the HTML file and add some more papers to our book. So we want to copy this paper and paste it. So let's make three lots of them. So this will become paper two. So the ID of the paper will be P2 and F2 and B2. Same for the paper three. Oh, and don't forget to change the contents. Now let's go back to the CSS and make the first page, the first paper, to be on top of the other papers. So the front one should be appeared here. This is now looking good. So looking at the outcome, here we can see the front page of the first paper. Once we flip this, on the left, we can see the back page of the first paper. And on the right, we can see the front page of the second paper. Let's go and implement that. Now we returned back to the HTML. So when we flip a paper, we're going to add another class called flipped. So let's imagine this first paper is flipped. So we added the class flipped. So let's go to the CSS file and implement how the flipped effect gonna look like.
So going up to the front and back page, let's give them the transform origin of left. And also the transition time of 0.5 seconds. Looking at the website, the transition is not really 3D. So let's go all the way up to the paper and add the perspective 1500 pixel. Now the animation looks more 3D. Let's compare our website with the outcome that we're making. So if we have a look at the left hand side of the outcome, we should see the back page of the first paper. However, if we have a look at the website, we see something that we shouldn't see. We see the front page. So we really want to hide the back face of the element when it's flipped. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the back face property to our front class. So the back face visibility to hidden. There you go. Oh, this is looking a bit weird. So let's correct the contents inside a back face. There you go. And I think it will look even more like a book if we have some sort of line in the middle. This is looking good. Now let's go back to the HTML and let's get rid of this flipped class. This is because we are going to add and remove the flipped class dynamically inside the JavaScript. Let's start by making references to the DOM elements. So these are the references for the previous button and the next button and the book. So the previous button, next button and the book. Here we have the references for the individual papers, which will be inside this book. So we want to implement this flip animation. So in order to do that, we will need four functions. So the first one will be the open book function. And the second one will be the close book function. And the third one will be go next page function. And the last one will be go previous page, go prev page function. So here we want to store three variables. So the current location of one means that we are looking at the front page of the paper one. So this will be the current location two because we see the front page of the paper two. And this will be the current location of three. Num of papers means the number of total papers we have inside our book. So it will be three. And the max location means that the maximum value of the current location we can have. So this will be always one more than the number of papers. Because we have three papers inside our book, but we can have up to the current location of four. So if you have a look at this, we have the current location of one here, and the current location of two here, and three, and the final one, which is four.
Now let's add the event listeners. So what we're doing here is that whenever we click the previous button, we're going to call the go proof page function, which is down here. And whenever we click the next button, we're going to call the go next page function, which is down here. Let's start by implementing the go next page function first. When the go next page function is called, the function body will only run when the current location is not at the end location. When the current location is 1, which means the first paper, it will open the book first, and then it's going to add the flipped class to the paper 1. When the current location is paper 2, it will just simply add the flipped class. And when it's paper 3, it will flip the book it will flip the paper and then close the book. So the default part here means that when the current location is not 1, 2 or 3, it's going to cause an error. And at the end, we're going to increment the current location by 1. Alright, so let's have a look if this is really working. So let's click the next button. Yep, the book opened. Yep, it's going great. However, just a little thing. Here we should not see back 1, instead we should see the back 3. So if you have a look at the example page, if we flip all the way to the back, we should see back 3 just like this. So that means we need to give a little bit of tweak to our Z index when we flip the pages. There you go, it's going great. We have a little problem. So when we open the book like this, the previous button is hidden behind the page. So let's try this again. So when we open the book, the previous button is hidden. So if we have a look in the example website, when we open the book, the layout of the buttons and the book changes so that it's smooth and the buttons are all clickable. So now, let's implement the open book function. Yep, this is working, but let's make this animation a bit more smoother. So let's go back to the CSS and scroll all the way to the bottom until the button. Let's add transition transform 0.5 seconds. Let's move to the top and under the book class, let's add the transition transform of 0.5 second. And let's try it again. Oh, let's reload the page. Yep, it's looking great. Let's go back to the main JS file and 
implement the goprev page function. Let's see if this is really working. This is looking good. Let's go back to the JavaScript file and implement the close book function. The close book function is working nicely when it's at the start of the book, but it's not working so well at the end of the book. So let's go back to the close book function and change this a little bit. Here we added a boolean parameter called is at beginning. So when the close book function is called at the beginning, the parameter will be true. But when it's called at the end, the parameter will be false. So depending on whether is at beginning is true or false, the styling of the book will change differently. Let's see if this is working. Oh, I think we missed something out. So looking at the JavaScript file, oh, here we missed the open book function. And let's try this again. This is working great. Now we came to the end of the tutorial. I will provide you with the source code for both basic version and the customized version in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Let's learn and code like a star.